Hey what's going on guys, Core X Designs here and welcome to another 3D Studio Max tutorial. First off, I'm really sorry for not uploading videos on my reg regular schedule. Uh, you know, there have been some reasons and hopefully that won't happen in the future again. So today I'm going to be showing you how to model um, tire treads in 3D Studio Max. But before we start off, let me show you a sample. Okay, so in front of you, you, ha you can see this tire tread right, right here. And if you just go ahead and hide everything up, we can easily see that this is very, very cool to model and really looks really cool. And the best part about this is it's not turbo smooth, so it's pretty low poly if you if you like to call it low poly. So you can see that this we have a pattern and it's repeating all over the place, and the tire treads actually look pretty cool. Okay, so first off, to start up the modeling process. okay so new here alright so first off before we start we need to go into Google and you know find a good looking tire tread pattern so I'm gonna go ahead and open up Google and we're gonna be searching for uh, tire treads whoops and we go to Google images and what we what we're looking for is a tire tread in which you can easily identify which part is actually repeating for example, if you look at this one, you can actually see that this part right here, and the, as well as this, is repeating all over the place. So, uh, if, in a good tire tread pattern, you actually need something that you can identify to be repeating. For example, I guess this one is a very good and possibly the perfect tire tread for us to start with. So, we can see here that easily that this part here is repeating itself all over again, here and here, and then this part on this row and this part on this row actually if you look closely enough yep uh, we have a kind of like a bump here for the for first one and then a bump here for the second one so I guess these two units are repeating themselves again and again you need to be really careful to see which units are actually uh, repeating so similarly we can we can we can I think work with this so I'm just gonna right click here and hit save image as I'm just going to save it on my desktop as tread Okay, so it's done. Let's go ahead and open up our um, 3 Studio Max folder. Okay, so now what I'm going to be doing, doing is go ahead and see where we saved the tire tread pattern. We're going to right click, hit properties, and go into details. And here we can actually see what are the dimensions of this image. So it's 450 by 335. So remember that and go into 3D Studio Max, grab a plane on the top viewport. Let's go ahead and randomly create a plane. Okay, make sure you center this plane up at zero comma zero comma zero. Um, that's not important, but uh, yeah, I like to do it. Also, we're gonna drop down the lens segments to one by one, and the way I do this is just by right-clicking uh, these arrows and just turn to the minimum value that it can hold. Okay, now for the important part, what we need to do is take the tread properties and okay so the dimensions are 450 by 335 so I'm just gonna input in 450 and 335 here now you saw that I input the values in the opposite way I read them so it should be 450 here and 335 here but actually 3D Studio Max and Windows they work in opposite ways and the length in 3D Studio Max becomes the width in Windows and vice versa so that's just that's just something you discover while you're working with uh, 3D Studio Max a lot, and it's really not that difficult. So I'm just gonna hit M real quick to bring up my material editor, and on a new slot, I'm just gonna create a standard material or a VR material, whichever render you plan to use. However, it won't matter for the blueprint here, but I'm just gonna stick with a VR material as only because I like to keep things uh, pretty uniform. So I'm just going to click on this box next to Diffuse and I'll choose Bitmap. And really quickly, I'm just going to, you know, uh, go ahead and browse to where I actually saved that. Actually moved it to C. We have our tread pattern. Just hit Open here and OK. So what you do is click on this button that says Show Shaded Web Material in Viewport. And then this button that says Go to Parrot. Alright, so now we need to drag this material onto our uh, plane that we just created. And I'm just going to change the color of the plane to black. That doesn't really matter, but uh, helps a lot. So one last thing that you need to do is if you go ahead and observe really closely, you can see that we start to really get some jagged edges at the ends here. And, you know, we can't really work with 
too much jagged edges. However, we can work in this situation, but in most situations you won't be able to. So a way to fix that is by going into Material and Show Materials in Viewport as and click Realistic Materials with Maps. Now, if you're using 3D Studio Max 2011 or earlier, uh, this option is going to be Hardware Display with Maps. And I'm using 3D Studio Max 2012, and that's why it uh, it it's showing up that option. Now, if your if, you, if your materials kind of vanish out of there, all you need to do is just click on them once, and they will reappear. And now, if you go ahead and zoom in real close, you can see that the jag edges still get jagged, but they're they're a lot less. Okay, so enough talking on my part. Let's go ahead and start some modeling. Before we do that, actually, we need to right-click this, go to Optic Properties, and we need to go into General and just go ahead and uncheck the box called show frozen in gray and then click on the box that says freeze and then hit ok so that way we cannot actually move it even if you wanted to uh, that's just a good way for to set up blueprints okay so going into my top viewport I'm just gonna really quickly create let's say a plane let's start with uh, this part right here the, this one seems the most simple I'm gonna create right here right click I'm just gonna move it up Okay, and I'm also going to uh, make it stay through. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and convert this into an editable poly. Go to vertex mode, and all we need to do really is, you know, line up the vertices to actually get the shape of uh, of the tread. So. I'm going to really quickly do this. It's not really difficult, of course. If you've used 3D Studio Max before, you know this is the this is the easiest part. Now we we'll just go ahead and go into Edge, and holding down Shift, I'm just going to drag it out, and that's going to create like a duplicate edge of sorts. And we all we need to do really is line up the edges. Um, okay, and just going to really quickly do this. All right, so you need to basically you know go ahead and do this for the entire tire just make sure you don't do this uh, for this part we just use we just do it for this uh, half part here and then we can use symmetry to actually get the other half so yeah I'm going to be speeding up the video and uh, you know you can watch while I model this thing up okay so as you can see I have finished modeling all this stuff up and for the sake of simplicity in this tutorial I didn't actually take two of these and you know make it so you know I can just do with one it won't actually be visible in the tire so what we need to do basically now is really take this and hit the align tool right here see this and click on this uh, yellow uh, this green here make sure you untake X and Y position take only Z and hit OK and we need to do this for actually all of these uh, all of these up so that they're all planar and that's what we really want because you know tires are planar so I'm just gonna really quickly do this and I think they're all planar now so now what we can do is take this and hit attach and you know just go ahead and attach all of the pieces together there we go okay so now what we can do is apply symmetry to this and just take this whoops symmetry mirror let's move it all the way to the center make sure you hit flip here and well seam and just go ahead and move it somewhere here you can see this, that this vertex is two back so I'm just going to you know, take this vertex and just move it over and it's going to weld itself automatically. Okay, this one is not welding. Okay, now it does. Okay, so as you can see we have a cool looking tire pattern here and we're ready to duplicate it. So what I'll do first thing is I'll take this, hit edge, actually border, and I'll hit control A to select all borders and holding down shift I'm just going to move all these down here. Something like this. So they're kind of like kind of like 3D. All right. So now that we have the entire tire modeled up, we need to find a way to actually close these gaps up. So we can see here that we have these gaps here, and if you start to duplicate this uh, this uh, basic piece again and again, that gap is going to show up again and again, and that's not going to look cool. So what we can do to you know get uh, get away with it is what, there are two ways to actually do this. One is extremely simple, and the other one is extremely difficult. It actually depends on what you're working with. I personally use, I mean, I prefer the uh, extremely simple method, of course, but uh, it may be different for you guys, and I have no idea why. So maybe if you're working on something really, really professional, you might want to use that method. So, anyways, I'm just going to tell you the the 
extremely difficult method first. So what you need to do basically is you know find a way to bridge all these gaps together. So since all this is one part now, you can actually take these two edges, these two edges, and actually bridge them together. And then we can bridge these two edges together. And you might need a lot more edge loop segments and all that shop, all that uh, stuff to actually con uh, you know completely cover this up. However, the way I do this is, you know, I just go ahead and make this into a tire and then I use a tube to actually make it look like it is all covered up. So that actually works better for me, but, uh, you know, might, might, might not be the same for you. So if you go ahead and go to, let's say, our side view and we go to the edge mode and, whoops, take the end edges here, take these and actually loop them together. Okay, so we want only the end edges, so let's go ahead and unselect, deselect the ones that we don't want. Okay, so these are the edges that we want. And what we need to do basically here is hold down shift and drag those outwards. So we have something like this. Now we need to do this again and again so that we, so that we form somewhat like a uh, semi-circular shape. And the reason we're doing this is because... Um, if you look at real real tires, they're not they're not flat from the from the size. They actually have some bulge, and that's what we that's what we're trying to replicate. So this one should be enough. And if you go ahead and uh, take the symmetry, it's going to be applied on the other side as well. The what we need to do is just go ahead and take all of this back somewhere here, and then holding down Shift, just going to drag it out. Well, wait, just a minute. I think. Uh, okay, so I just go ahead, went and put put it in the wrong place. So what I'll do is I'll take, uh, let's say, our, well, we take our element, this element, whoops, the element, and duplicate it. Something like this, I guess. Clone to element, hit OK. And that way we... Uh, we're, gonna make, we're gonna have some easy, easier to loop around. So I'm gonna hold on Shift and click and drag it outward, something like this. We made, all right. So we just make one copy right now. You can see that we have this weird-looking, uh, you know, uh, overlapping. Yep. So we the, we need to fix that up, and the way we do this basically <clears throat> is by simply moving this up, and there is no way. So what we can do is actually take these vertices and actually tweak them. So, whoops. We could just go ahead and move this over here. Take this, move it up here. And you know, just you know, need to make it fit. Okay, so we can move this uh, up here, I guess. Delete this and let's try and do it again. And see if it see if it still overlaps and it kind of does. Make sure you do it in reference this time and now you can actually see what difference you're making here. So if we go to vertex here, we go ahead and ch uh, take this up. You can actually t take see that the changes are being reflected over there. So I guess I could take this one up and this one uh, kind of down here, and it actually looks pretty good now. So I'm just going to take the reference and delete that, and take this and holding down Shift, grab a copy and move it somewhere up here. Now, you want to make uh, at least 50 copies. Uh, you could do with 100 copies, but 50 looks pretty good to me. Hit OK. And you're going to see that we have kind of like a road thing here. And, and uh, yeah. So we're just going to take one of this. OK, so my fault, we did something that was not supposed to be done. We created all of them to be references of each other, which we don't want. All of, we all we want them all to be copies of each other. So we just go ahead and hit 50 here. Hit OK. Okay. So now what we need to do is go ahead and somehow attach this all together. So that's very easy to do. Hit Control A and then go Group and just group them into threads. All right. So now, if you go ahead and click on this group, we now add a modifier called Bend. So it's right here, Bend. And what you're going to do is increase the angle of this to something like this. Also, you, now you want to go ahead and experiment just a bit with the axis, and you know, just kind of find the right axis to, uh, to 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 make this look spherical. Now, it happens most of the time you cannot actually find the right axis, but if you change the direction to negative 90 degrees and the bend axis to y, you can get uh, what we're looking for. Now, this is just something I discovered while working. 
uh, you might not be able to do this in the first try but uh, you have these settings right in front of you you can actually copy that up so for the angle I use 363.5 and not 360 degrees and the reason I do this is because if I use 360 degrees it doesn't close up and for this case also it doesn't close up quite well this one I increase the angle so that it doesn't look where it starts and where it ends so right here we can see where it starts and where it ends okay so that is looking pretty cool all we need to do finally is go ahead and close the gaps so the way we do this is very simple just go over to our left viewport and it's gonna go ahead and create a tube from the center and just go ahead and move it out somewhere over here and then move it in somewhere over here oh let's do it again again so somewhere here here and give it some depth and we're going to be aligning this tube to our to our group here hit ok so the center of the tube is actually on the center of the of the uh, tire rim so we're going to take this tube and increase the height so that uh, it actually fits perfectly so also decrease the height segments to one we don't really need those many segments okay so we're just going to affect pivot only center to object go ray height increase the height and this is a, this is just a place we need to play with it and you know get kind of the right way to get it now it of course doesn't look really smooth but we're going to be adding turbo smooth to to this uh, you know this tube so you don't need you you don't really need to worry about that okay so as you can see the uh, parts look absolutely close now as you can see right there and instead of playing turbo smooth here actually you could just go ahead and increase the sides to something like 32 maybe okay and that look, that's looking pretty good now you won't you won't actually use just a tire in this case in a case such as this you will of course have rim so you you will actually compensate for this uh, tube right here you know it looks really um, what do you call it smooth and it won't actually affect your model because you will be using a rim as I told you, let me wait a sec, let me open that project up again. Okay, so the thing it was this. Okay, so as you can see here, I have used exactly the same technique, but this rim here actually hides the cylinder here. And it actually looks like we actually modeled the entire thing up. In this way, actually, I used the difficult way that I told you, the, the way of bridging the edges together but if you go ahead and follow my instructions closely you will get exactly the same result so yeah this is going to be pretty much it for tire modeling I'm just going to really quickly open up the tire model that we just created okay go to here okay so this is going to be pretty much it for this tutorial thanks for watching everyone if you like the video go ahead and hit the like button down below also favorite the video and share it with your friends if you really like it also be sure to subscribe to my channel for upload uh, upcoming video tutorials and speed models whatever, whatever you want yeah it's gonna be pretty much it thanks for watching everyone and uh, yeah have a nice day